third day of work um, with the new with the new project. So last time I stopped the the stream while I was having uh, a little bit of a moment with the uh, Rust borrow checker, and that's one of the things in Rust that is love and hate really because um, you get you get these kind of situations where uh, you go for like two hours like last time uh, making uh, big refactoring big changes to the code and it takes you takes two hours to to get uh, everything to compile from a syntactic uh, point of view and everything is you you think everything is correct and then the borrow checker phase in the Rust compiler comes and, and you realize that the direction you were going in the last uh, two hours was, was the wrong one and you need one more refactoring, which is exactly what happened to me. Last. I like how the language sort of forced me to, to become a better programmer in finding different solutions um, compared to what I'm used to. So, for example, just to give an example of what happened last time, um, in Rust there is there is a problem every time you you have a vector of something um, in a, in a struct and you want to uh, iterate over that vector and then uh, call a function that is mutating the state of that that will trigger the 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 borrow checker and the, the way around this is basically try to design your class to be as uh, immutable as possible so you really want to try to 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 get into a design that if you can avoid passing that mute variable to 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 something or even having a method that gets uh, a mute self a mutable mutable self that really helps you in 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 what was happening um, on monday was that um, i had a method that was uh, uh, iterating over all the draw calls all the render list which is um, the, the list of draw calls that i wanted to render and calling this function that in order to render was um, working on the cache system uh, to make sure that I don't set the same texture two times, I don't set uh, the same constant buffer two times, and so on. So, um, the, the, the problem was that the entire caching system was a member of this forward render and really didn't need to be because it, it ideally is just used in, in, in the, 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 the final rendering function that are going through over all these render lists. So the way I changed this, I created this uh, render main pass. Um, and, and what is happening is now cache is just on the stack, right? And, and because it's all happening in here. That's the only place where cache is actually used. There is absolutely no reason to have it as possible. It's, it's, it's completely possible that um, in a couple of months, if I can't really get out of these things happening to me, like, you know, tripping over the borrow checker and having to heavily redesign my code you know it's totally possible that i decide you know what let's go to a language that offers less friction and just lets me work without stopping me all the time and that could be something like c plus plus or even try another language uh favorite of mine was that uh yesterday i was able to come back in the uh, same situation that i was um see now it's building <laughs> um so i have uh, my plane uh, back back in flight i changed the 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 color of the of the of the sky just just because i was doing some tests um it seems to work but uh, a couple things got broken and one thing that got broken was all the lines for the uh, debug view 
So if I enable the debug view, I see no no lines on the plane showing forces and things like that. And also, uh, if you can see, I put my camera up, if you can see this uh, um, speed indication, they're very hard to read because there used to be a rectangle down here. So basically I broke the entire uh, code that uh, I call the G. So now we need to understand what's going on and why um, this code is broken. So in order to do that, let's fire our old friend uh, Visual Studio, make sure that I'm studio. Let's do the graphic debugger. All right, and let's activate the debug render and capture, and let's try to see if we can understand what's broken. Ah, I'm not binding the custom buffer. That's why it doesn't work. Let's see. Bind custom buffer. To be about... Oh, there you go. Okay, now I can see this. Very nice. So we have our things back, but... But... Let's do another capture because there should be that uh, rectangle under the, the number to make it easier to read them. Capture building. Let's see if we fix that. Yes, it does, but it's not transparent. Begin UI, that should be the place where we set the... Uh, what is it? Set blend state. Yeah, this one. Come on. Oh, yes, and here we are, and we are back. Cool, cool. Should I fix the bullets? Where I do render bullets? Exception. So here we are, we can see the bullets, but they will be non-transparent, I mean, not not using Z buffer. In fact, I can see them. Okay, let's see if it works. All right, perfect. So we have bullets, okay. Oh shit, I didn't, I didn't press record. Yeah. It's too late. I, I do it now. I, I have to remember next time. All right, let's kill some. Some we got somebody. Well, let's first of all let's see if it's really working. Yeah, I can see the planes. Although I have a feeling that the lightning buffer is not set. The next topic, which is um, starting to experiment how to create uh, an editor for this thing. Of course, I have different possible strategies. Let's create a C sharp application that interfaces with the engine. Now, to do that with the C++ engine is quite simple. And no idea how complicated it is to do it with Rust. So what I need to do is figure out how to do a DLL in Rust, export some Rust objects, 
and use it from C sharp. So that's that's the thing. All right. Okay. So so in theory, in target debug JV editor RS DLL. Beautiful. Next time I will do it with the net framework just to to be sure. So um, let's be optimistic. Let's call it the J. Let's call it the JV editor. Just build me the freaking x64. Oh yes, oh yes, it works. Okay, that's cool, that's super cool. That's super cool and super easy. Okay, so what we want to do next? Okay, that, that should be easy, right? Okay, that should be easy, okay. Right, so, Let's say that I do and I do new new people, right? And this I saw it on a talk today. This returns a box of people. Right. So we do box new people and let's make it cool let's make it that it's also sending parameters so let's let's make it that it's sending a as an f32 and b as an f64 right and people will have those and b right sounds reasonable Right. Like this. No, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's totally amazing. That is totally amazing. Let me see if how I can from Rust receive a people. And, and you so let's say that for example people has a, say the people has a, a function uh, get b modded right a peep return a people modded If this work is too good to be true, what number are we expecting? We are expecting seven, six, eight plus one hundred. What we are expecting? Yeah, so we're expecting eight hundred something. Right, eight hundred something. Wow, it is amazing. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it's even better than what I did with with Assetto Corsa. With Assetto Corsa, I had a C plus plus dot net DLL sitting in the middle between C sharp and the entire engine. From this one, it looks like all I have to do is create this layer of C calls back and forth. Ah, no, hold on. I still need to. I still need to pass string. Okay, so I call it, but the file name is fucked up. Can I make, but if I imagine if I make it, this standard should work. Yeah, okay. But still not good because it means that if we have a, I mean, could be good. Realistically, it, it will be good. And you know, the, what is the problem? The problem is that if I have a path, there is a Unicode path. This is not going to work. Is it a big problem? I don't know. 
I don't know if it is a big problem. I don't know if it is a big problem. Bambino piccolo. Come here. Come die. Say hello to the streamers. Come. Let's go now. I can do the conversion on the You know what? I I think I think I'm going to leave it for for today. I think I'm going to leave it with what it was and be happy that we start with um For now, just normal string. And just to make sure we test again. And it works. And with this, I call myself happy for today. And thank you very much, guys, for uh, sticking with me. And uh, my next stream is going to be uh, Friday morning, 10 o'clock. And uh, I hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you.